Good morning, Year Fives, and welcome to your third day's reading lesson. I hope you've all been doing really well and you've had a good night's rest and you're ready for a day of learning. So we're going to continue with our skill of to find and copy, and that's going to be our learning objective for the day. And we're going to carry on reading a couple of pages from Stig of the Dump. I hope you've been enjoying the story, um, and, and we're going to see what's going to be happening next. Okay, so. The last time we um, read, we read about the fact that um, Barney's been helping out Stig, making his den um, look a little bit more homely. They managed to create a chimney using tins, and now they're trying to create a window for him. Okay, so you're going to can follow with me um, and read out aloud as we go through the story together. All right, so um, I'm just going to read from the previous page. Um, the last sentence, just so that it makes sense from where we're going to move on to this page. So, between the tops on the chalk, there was a layer of red clay, good, clamp, damp, squidgy stuff you could make model animals with. Right, so you can now follow with me. I'm on. Stig began to dig out lumps. Stig began to dig out lumps of clay with his fingers, and Barney found another good clay mine and did the same. They got as much as they could and took it back to the den and from the outside Stig set to work to fill in the gaps between the jam jars. They had to make two more journeys before all the jars were firmly bedded in clay and then Barney carefully wiped the smears off the bottoms of the jar with the rag. Then they stood and admired their window. They even made faces at each other, one standing inside and the other outside because you could almost see through it. It certainly let the light in, even though it was late in the afternoon, there was not much light to let in. Well, well, said Barney, that's that. It was a thing he had often heard his grandfather say when he'd finished a job. He was tired after all the inventing he had done. He went to sit down and then he saw all the round plates of tin that Stig had cut out lying around on the floor. He gathered them up. There must be a use for these too. He went back to the window and found that the discs fitted exactly over the ends of the jars he had pressed them into the soft clay. They were just enough to go around. There you are, Stig, he said, like on a ship to shut the portholes, if you don't want people to look in or to shut the dark out. There was a feeling in the air, evening air that darkness was coming and that it would be snug to sit by the new fireplace and watch the fire going up the chimney. But Barney suddenly remembered something and stood up with his mouth open. Stig, he said, I've got to go home. All the way home, I mean. I probably won't be staying with Granny till Christmas. Stig looked at him. Stig, said Barney, when I come back again, you will still be here, won't you? Stig didn't answer. But he went to a little niche in the chalk wall, poked about among some things there, and brought back something which he gave to Barney. He looked at it. It was a little chipped flint, perfectly shaped like a flat Christmas tree and very sharp. An arrowhead, Barney gasped. For me? Oh, thank you, Stig. I really must go now. See you at Christmas. You'll be here at Christmas, won't you, Stig? Goodbye. And he ran off. As he made his way along the bottom of the pit, he felt he knew the way there better than anyone else in the world. And he felt that Stig's house was as much his home as anywhere else. After all, it was like drawing pictures. Once you've put a chimney and a window on a house, you've really made a house. I'm gonna read the next chapter now. It warms you twice. Christmas was over at grandmother's house. The old oak beams were still decorated with trails of ivy and there were still branches of holly stuck in the tops of picture frames. The last turkey bone had been picked and the last thimble found in the pudding. They had even got a good way round the Christmas cake. They had been to a circus. Barney lay in bed in the grey morning light. For once he was not in a hurry to jump out of bed. The air in the bedroom felt icy to the end of his nose. Let me see, he thought. Is there anything special to look forward to today? He couldn't think of anything. He was looking at the thick black beam in the wall that grew out of the floor right up to the ceiling. It had been part of a ship before it was part of the house. Grandfather said, it had deep holes cut out of it where other bits of timber had fitted into it. What was that hidden in one of the holes? Barney sat up in bed suddenly. It was the flint, Stig's flint, left there since last time he had come to stay. And he hadn't even thought about Stig all over Christmas. 
He got out of bed and looked out of the window. There was white frost on the grass. A few hopeful birds hung about the bird table, fluffed up like willy balls, waiting for some food to be put out for them. He reached up and took out the flint. It was like a lump of ice. I wonder what it's like living in a cave these days, thought Barney. Poor Stig, he must be cold. After breakfast, Barney slipped out of the house and went off to the pit. In the court, the frozen leaves crunched like cornflakes under his feet. He climbed down into the pit on the far side, where the cliff was lowest, and it hurt his fingers to hold on to the icy tree roots. The nettles were all de de dead in the bottom of the pit, and the old cans had lumps of solid ice in them. There was no sign of life in the shelter, though he noticed the ashes of a small dead fire and the faint smell of wood smoke still hung around. But at the back of the cave was a kind of nest made of bracken and dead grass and newspaper. He thought he heard breathing sounds coming out of it. Stig, Barney called. Nothing happened. Right, and we're going to leave it there and see what he's going to discover. Right, so we're going to carry on with our skill, which is vocabulary, and making sure that we are looking at our find and copy um, questions today specifically. Okay. So yesterday we did something exactly the same, very similar, and you're going to read these two paragraphs for me, and you're going to answer the find and copy questions based on these two paragraphs. Again, I've highlighted some words that might be of interest to you. Remember, vocab is something that we definitely want to be pushing ourselves, and that we are trying to look up new words so that we can use it in our day-to-day -day speaking, we can use it in our writing, and these words, if you would like to write them in your reading record book, you should have that at home with you. At the bottom there, it says new words that you've learned. You can magpie some of these words. And if you forget the meaning, you can go and Google them yourself and have a look at them. So let's have a go through some of these words together. Some of the words I haven't highlighted that also might be um, some nice high level vocab words. However, they might be in the um, questions and I would like you to try and use those skills in order to understand that vocabulary. So the first way we can look at is summoning every ounce. So like gathering every bit of cover, um, courage. Okay, so that's what summoning every ounce means, getting as every single tiny little bit, okay, of his courage. The disheveled looking man, disheveled means he doesn't look, he looks quite like tatty and he hasn't got anything that's um, very smart. He looks very worn down. Um, okay, so his clothing is maybe um, very wrinkled, maybe it's got holes in. Okay, when you're looking disheveled, it means you don't look very fancy. You look quite, um, you just look very rough almost, like you've been through a lot. Foliage is types of trees, okay? There are a foliage, the plants, okay? So if you have thick foliage, it can be really thick bushes, it could be thick tree, like a forest that you're trying to go through. If you engulf something, it means you take it all in. Wincing means um, kind of like crying out, right? He has a stone, of stone cut through his improvised plastic shoes. Improvise, if you improvise something, it means you make it up. So he's had to make up these shoes of his, okay? He hasn't got any normal shoes. So that would then relate to the fact that he's looking disheveled. He hasn't got any normal trainers. He's had to make up some plastic shoes. So perhaps he's got some plastic packets and he's tied that around his feet. He scoured the ground. Scoured means to look for, okay? He looked over, he scoured the ground, he looked over the ground. And clenching, this word I think came up in our vocabulary, and not too long ago, clenching means to hold something very tight or grasp it, okay? So if you clench something in your fist, it means you're holding it tightly. So you can have a go now, pause the video, have a read through this, and then we're going to come back to it later once we're answering the questions. So here are your five questions, okay? I would like you to now read them very carefully. Normally we would highlight um, all those keywords, so we're making sure we're not making any of those silly mistakes. We've been going through those silly mistakes this week. I made some on purpose for you to make sure that you were paying attention. And um, we are also going to be looking at the silly mistakes that um, in yesterday's lesson, 
where people were not reading the questions clearly, okay? So please make sure you read the questions with understanding. If it's asking for one word, you can only give me one word. If it's asking for a group of words, it's three or four or five words at most. It's not the whole sentence. We're not wasting our time writing out every single word of that sentence, okay? Um, so make sure that you're reading your questions with understanding and when you're copying that answer, you're copying it letter for letter. Spelling will count, which will be such a shame if you go and find the answer and then you don't copy it correctly. So remember yesterday, you need to go back in the video to the paragraph each time you're looking for the answer and then carry on. Okay, so good luck with that. Pause the video whenever you need and go and answer those five questions for me. Great, hopefully you've been going backwards and forwards for the last five times, trying to find your answer and copying it down and then looking at the next question and then going back. We're gonna look at the answers now together. So here we go. Number one is the thick foliage. Two is improvised, three is scoured, four is rising sense of red, five is ominous or forbidden. Okay, so those are your answers there. Ominous, we've actually looked at that word quite a few times this year. So hopefully you re remember that it means something that's sort of like a bad feeling, something that's not really, um, doesn't sit well with you. I always think of clouds, the ominous gray clouds, and there's these big, dark, rolling gray clouds that gives me the sense that a storm's gonna come, okay? So hopefully you've done really well. Again, love to see your work. Send it to the year five at thepalmeracademy.com. Just to let you know that some of you who are have been sending your works to me on Teams, Teams will no longer be up and running at the end of this week. So you will all need to send me your work on uh, the email from going, um, going forward. So please make sure that you're sending it to that email. We do take a register of you every day based, based on if you are sending us your work. And if we have not received your work, we'll be contacting you at the end of the week, okay? So I haven't received some work from any of you, so I'd really like to see some today. And thank you to those of them who have been sending their work to me regularly. Hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy your maths lesson next.